That's for you. Even Mark's boy. That's got, this kid's got, his nuts are bigger than mine. <laughs> Rocking it. Holy. So there's a sack and then in there is where they will settle into. My nephew had a sack. Yo, this nothing right him. here. When the, he comes out, we're going to go clubbing. Man. We're going to take, <laughs> take him clubbing and use him as a magnet to pull chicks. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez, porque sabes que let's do the show porque I got a lot of things to do. Thing I gotta go to that dry cleaner here by Kim Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza. I gotta go get some Neo Spore Spore and Paul. You know what George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George Lopez. George Lopez. Oh my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh my God. Hi. Hey, everybody, this is producer Grant here. Just a reminder, if you like the show, if you're enjoying the show, please like, comment, subscribe on any platform you're checking it out on, whether that's on YouTube, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anything. Any engagement that we have really, really helps. We all serve the almighty algorithm these days, and any amount that you sort of interact with the show in any way just really helps us out, helps us get cooler guests for the show, helps raise the profile for the show, helps give us more content for you guys to enjoy. So thanks again for checking it out, and please enjoy the episode. Uh, needless to say, our guest uh, will not be having beer. Uh, Sadly. But in the old days, <laughs> women used to... <laughs> yep. So in the comedy days, I was in Las Vegas in the 90s at Harris, and there was a woman who was expecting a child, Latina, at the bar, drinking a goblet of wine. Ooh. And as we were having our cranberry vodka cranberries, I could not stop looking at the fact that this woman was expecting a child <laughs> and in her into her third goblet of red wine. <laughs> oh, no. What trimester was she in? I, I, mm, it was, I would <laughs> say well, she maybe was it wasn't her third. child. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> I yeah. said, "Are you pregnant and drinking?" And she said, "It's not yours, puto." There you go. Just, and I said, hey, <laughs> hey. You know, I just Another made a goblet. True. I made a comment to my wife uh, just a couple of days ago. I said, back in the day when you were pregnant, I said, I don't remember people telling you don't drink. She wasn't drinking. She yeah, said, well, they didn't say it because this I wasn't doesn't drinking. Bother you, doesn't it? No. Okay. What your sunglasses? But, yeah. No. Why? She says, but, but wait a minute. But you're. But listen, I'm gonna say something right now. Then we'll introduce our guest. All right. When you first came in here, you <laughs> threw caution to the wind. You had a big laugh. You probably were like 70 pounds heavier. You didn't have a fucking cane. And you loved it. You were laughing. And then all of a sudden now that we know more about you, when something gets a little bit too close to being married, you're like, I, I can't. <laughs> I better not. You know, like, like almost like they're monitoring you. Yeah, Grant, she doesn't even listen to shit. <laughs> My wife doesn't even listen to I shit. Don't think, How do you think he stayed married for 51 yeah, years? Yeah, she doesn't I listen don't know. to shit. I, I, I was almost saying, have you noticed a difference? In Gil? Yeah. I mean, you know, you pick and choose Is battles. Is he less a, mamon or more? Hey, mate, What's the hey, number? Hey, no, 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 I'm not. I'm, I'm not more mamon. If it's funny, I laugh. Even She didn't even. Hey, she, bo- they don't, don't blame it on me. <laughs> if it's All funny, right. I love it. Introduce our guest. All right, joining us. While Tommy Lasorda finishes his <laughs> uh, Joining us on the podcast today, we have Liz Iacuzzi, comedian, uh, current podcaster, host of Was I in a Cult podcast, uh, as well as self-described uh, one pregnant-ass lady. So, Liz, welcome to the podcast. Um, thank, you. thank you for having me. What, is it, what does it feel like to be pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, how one much word. time do you have? I'm no. I, I mean, we're we're never gonna be. Uh, we, you're never. Your hormones change. When when my, when Anne, when I was pregnant, I was working with Bill Ingvall, mm-hmm. and Bill Ingvall and I were co-headlining. And Ingvall said, "Has Anne has just started crying for no reason?" And I said, mm-hmm. "No." And I went home and I said to Anne, Bill Ingvall asked me if you started crying for no reason. And she goes, no, I have the next day and the days after that, she would cry for no reason. Now, like now I did I hear her say, did my uh, change, did you change or you're talking about her? I'm your about hormones. You. I'm talking about your wife. <laughs> no, no, you, I thought you said. The male hormones. You, yeah, I the thought you said you've yeah. changed. The male hormones change more than the women. The With women. your yeah. Comic Cons and Crime World <laughs> no. conventions. Oh, I like, but that's no. all right. Think of like everything you are, and then think of something sucking everything. Man, 
out of that. And Did you know before you know? Like, do women know? Oh like, guys, God. we're like, I, think, yeah, I didn't use a condom. I think I'm okay. But do, 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 do women know? Can you feel like you're like, oh, my God. I'm well, there's a month that you, for me, I had no idea. And it was my birthday month. Yeah. So I was having it's fun. A big, it's a big thing because um, yeah. for the next, I mean, like us, you know, if we're tired, we can go to sleep and wake up and be refreshed. When you're pregnant, your, your hormones, your hormones change, your body changes. You can't sleep the same way. You have to pee all the time. You have to be careful where you go, and right? It's it's gotta be. Oh, and every step of the way is every something new. And for me, it's my first, so I'm I have no idea what's taking over my body. Well, God bless you. Good for you. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't know for a month or seven weeks, six weeks. And then I just couldn't get out of bed. October, late October. Oh, wow. Couldn't get out of bed. And I was like, Did you think it was COVID? Uh, thought it was oh, COVID. Oh, that was COVID. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Next day, couldn't get out of bed. I was like, oh, fuck, I got COVID. And took the test. Not COVID. So I was like, oh, what autoimmune disorder do I have? Like, <laughs> let's go down the train, the chain of autoimmune disorder. And that's the way you felt like you that's felt. That's what I thought. Because it was just a weird feeling. It, it just, I had never felt it before in this way. And it was the same thing and, with COVID. Yep. And, um... And I said, what if I'm pregnant? But that's impossible. But, you know, what if I'm pregnant? Not impossible. Obviously, it's not impossible. No, it's impossible. <laughs> but, 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 but I didn't, I wasn't, ex I, you, it was, it was in the plan, but it, it wasn't in the exact, it came a little. Time frame. Correct. Thank <laughs> yeah. So then because I said. Because is there a right time or wrong time to mm, make love? No. I, 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 know, I don't know. You're in it. Let me say this. I don't truly, it, in my heart of hearts. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Finally something. <laughs> I don't believe there's anything prettier than a pregnant lady that takes care of herself. And you look beautiful. Versus Thank you. versus Thank one that what so that, that 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 <laughs> walks around with no shoelaces that, on her that, feet. That's it. Yeah, my wife was a beautiful pregnant lady. Well, the one perk of my pregnancy so far is my leg hair has disappeared. Oh my god! <laughs> Where did it go? I have no, I have no idea. Sometimes you get hairier. Sometimes. How you about that? It's get, all going to the How face? about that? She got pregnant. The leg yeah. hair is gone. Like where did it go? That's no, got, it's, <laughs> it's gone. Three times I've shaved in the last however months. <laughs> and, Not and, joking. <laughs> and uh, as and as you have gone on uh, uh, and growing, <laughs> do, you, do you know the growing. do you know the sex or is a boy? Because it's car you know there's you know there's people did, did somebody did someone see you and say it's a boy or did somebody say you, oh, I'm it, never was, wrong. it was a psychic no or just saw a friend or some somebody no but people always say like when they see me they're like oh you're carrying a boy I can tell because it's all for facing forward yep but really those are like people who are moms with nothing better to do with their time <laughs> than analyze what oh no apparently boys grow this way girls grow this way. I had my first two were girls. My last one was a boy. And did I don't you know. did you know did back no. then the day? I wonder when they started no. telling people. When is when did they start telling? We you? found out really so, early. Ten yeah. weeks. You can find. And out you guys now. wanted to know. Yeah. I think so. I just you know I was thinking I was thinking about it and I said you know I do I want to. I know I I did know with the first two, and my third one my my dad told me, because I had six sisters no brothers. <laughs> yeah. My dad told me he says Mijo look. If this one's another girl, count your blessings. Because I'd already announced to the family this was at number three, no more. He says, count your blessings. Because girls will always come back and take care of their fathers. Boys, yeah, boys <laughs> have to take care of their own families. They go to their own families. All right, here's what I heard. And then, if you have a, if you have a boy, I'll pay for the mariachis. Mm. Wow. And then we had a boy. Pay for mariachis. Got the mariachis there. So since you're having a boy, we'd like to pay for your mariachis. <laughs> Thank you. At, at when did they, at, at the shower, or when, when should we hire him? Uh, at coming up. When I announced him, that day he, he was already Well, there. he was already out. He was already oh, wow. out. And put him in a little mariachi outfit. And, and I already put his fucking party work. Uh, now they came in. And well, but you have him at Alvera Street right there? Right playing. there, Montebello. So you, already, so you put him in a little uniform? Yeah. Don't put your little kid in a little uniform. <laughs> Let him be in a diaper for wouldn't be a diaper. Look, I'm looking. It wouldn't be a mariachi outfit. The, 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 uh, <laughs> here's what I heard. 
When you have a boy, you only have to worry about one dick. And when you have a girl, you have to worry about millions of them. That's true. <laughs> because you don't want anybody banging your, you know. How's that worked out for you? It's, uh, you know, it's, it's fucking horrible. <laughs> Coming in, huh? You know, because, you know, mine's on TikTok and. All the, th- all there's the like, things. There's like cleavage. You're just like, really? That does out and it's your little girl. Did you talk right? to her about that? And you're like, let's, let's have a I chat she, about your social I, media. I saw her on TikTok, and it looked like she was driving and on uh-huh. oh, doing yeah. a video. So I said, yep, yep, yep. please don't drive. And, and she said, oh, that was my friend. Okay, that's different. But you're still in the car. So you'll be all right. Uh, but, yeah, when you have a child, everything, everything, <laughs> bless you, everything, uh, everything changes. Right. Because now, before you could travel, right, you could pick up and say, we're going to go do this, we're going to do that, and then now when you have, because you don't want to leave them alone for <laughs> at least two years where you can't trust, right. you don't trust, all of a sudden now yeah. your mom and your dad and, and your family's the most loving family in the world, but would you leave your kid with them? No, you know, <laughs> nah, we're good. No, I really, there's people that have, have kids that are five years old who have never had a babysitter like somebody always stays with the kid. Now wow. as they get older... The only one I worry about now is the dog. You know, who's going <laughs> to take care of the dog in the family? Other than that, the kids are big. How old is that dog, by the way? Yeah, uh, About six years old now. February yeah. to turn six. Yeah. We got him as a stray. He's been with us for a year. They said he was five years old when we found him. So he's six years old now. Do you know that I saw a dog being rescued, and they cut his hair and blow-dried it and conditioned it? Mm-hmm. And I didn't get my hair blow dried and conditioned. I was probably like <laughs> fucking seventeen. Yeah, <laughs> this dog was laying on the street. They gave, they hooked up, cut his toenails. They did the whole thing. Yeah. Um, wh- what? Um, uh, the are you married? No. Okay. Because you got the you. you the, it does, it's a, who cares? Do you have to be? Did your parents? I, your apparently parents not. Apparently, you go, don't. And when you go on stage and you're and you're, or do your, it, you, well, you stand up, right? I haven't done it in a in a couple of years. Oh, do you miss it? I do. I figure now is the time. All the you know, go on stage when you're pregnant. That's but when you're all, if you go on stage and you're pregnant and talk about being pregnant, but do it in a way where I think that's where I think the. The re- you can you can mine like the gold because you know Completely. things are gonna happen to you that have happened to a lot of other women but yet they haven't happened to some women right and that's a good place to to live in right you know where you can have a perspective of telling people that can relate but also they go that's what judges look that's forward to you're like that's what's gonna happen yeah yeah, yeah. I, some women just love being pregnant I yeah which I don't know I appreciate being pregnant. <laughs> But it's. But I don't know how. You're you're not you you have no ownership over anything. You are not your body, or and, anything, and, else, and, or your brain, <laughs> <laughs> or your energy. Yeah. And yeah. then you really it's like storage until it's ready to come right. out, and then it grows, and then you go, and then they say, you know, do you want to see it? And you look, and then it starts to move. Yep. And then oh, it presses yeah. against your bladder, and then you pee. All the time, and oh, then yeah. you walk around with a big gallon of water. Gallon of water, and yep. it's still not enough water. No, nope. never enough water. And uh, are you nervous about about deliver? The deli- yeah. So that's yeah. You don't think about that when Listen, you get pregnant. <laughs> from, the t- from the time that I was a kid, and I would see women who were pregnant, I always wondered if they were afraid of giving birth. They had no choice. But if you don't have a child and you're in there and you go to the Lamaze, I don't have, I don't know what they do now, but you're breathing. Lamaze. Remember, they don't do Lamaze anymore. Huh? I don't I don't know. That's what I'm But anyway, doing. but whatever, it's like a boxer boxing his first fight. Like no one can tell you what it's like until yeah. you get in the ring right. and go, fuck, that shit's fucking hard. I got tired. They told me to keep breathing and it's it, and some women it, it's easy and some women it's it's not, and you don't you don't know. You don't but know. I didn't make you more nervous, did I? No. <laughs> no, but but, no. but but you do think about it. Yeah, and I think the closer you know, you get to the when like the water breaks and it's on, man. Once the water breaks, you can't be like. I mean, if you're having contractions, you could be like, well, hey, we're in a movie theater, you'll be all right. But right. when the water <laughs> breaks, it that's when the it's like, it's you're on the clock. My yeah. first one, 
she was, oh, my God, take me, kill me. I hate that. You know, <laughs> she was in a lot of pain. Uh, uh-huh. Went through a couple of days. I was in the police academy at that time. And so we got through the first one. The second one, I drove her to the hospital, and she was starting to get excited. She was starting, not excited, but panicking. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, she's concerned. Nervous. We got, we got to the emergency room door. I remember she stepped out of my Chevy pickup, and her water broke right there. And she started, oh, my God, Gil, I just broke. I, and all I, all I wanted to do was keep her calm. So I just looked at her and I said, you fucking pig. How could you do <laughs> Get this? Get that weapon. You know, how, how could you do this? Shh, God damn it. In the and then I just, I just pearl. I said, you know, they see this stuff all the time. It's a hospital. You're yeah. pregnant. Natural. Right. So I just want to get her calm. She went in there, had the baby. And you mentioned Lamaze. So I'm saying, okay, I'm in there with you. Okay, breathe, breathe, breathe. Pant, pant, pant. And she's telling me, no, you got it wrong, fool. You got it wrong. Because I was telling the wrong stuff. I never made it to the Lamaze school. Because <laughs> you were in the police academy. No, no, this was you the second said, one. pull over. And then she tells me. Spread them. After, after <laughs> I had, remember the, in the old days, you used to have this guy pull around a pony and take pictures on top of the pony. So the guy, had, hey. ra- the guy had raped me with my first kid. I told her, don't ever allow that man to put my kid on his horse again. Don't ever. <laughs> what do you mean raped you? Well, money-wise. Oh. Money-wise. So he I thought he picked you up and put the other one put you on the horse. She, 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 she's in the hospital. She's getting ready to have the baby. She <laughs> says, do you love me? I said, yes, I love you. Yes, I love you. She says, okay. I had the guy come around. We bought pictures again. <laughs> just like I love Lucy. She's, in that time, she decided yes, to be. When she's in the hospital, my sister put her up. And she says, how am I going to tell my husband? My sister said, tell him when you're pregnant. He can't, he can't get pissed off then. So she said, do you love me? I said, yes, I love you. And she says, okay, I bought the pictures, put the kids on the horse again. That's so, hilarious. Did they right. do that on Lucy? Yeah, they Shit, that was Do you crap. know that we would entrust our children to a guy with a mullet walking around with a donkey <laughs> fucking painted black with a seat with a cowboy hat, and you didn't know where he came from or whether he'd return? <laughs> My third kid's born. He's in the hospital. <laughs> I go visit her the day after he's born. I go, go to the hospital. I said, hey. Do you love me? She says, yes. I said, do you really love me? She says, yes. Okay, good. I wrecked the truck last night. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's We good. got even. So so picking the right doctor, Yeah. How, who who recommended your doctor? So I, Is that okay? We talk about this? Oh, yeah. full on. Let's yeah. ask, ask me anything. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll get to that. But, but, but it, it, picking the right, did you have all the same doctor for all, three, all the kids? First doc, no. First doctor was a family doctor. Second doctor was Kaiser. Second and third were Kaiser. Random. Yeah. Then Kaiser. I dumped. Then I dumped Kaiser after that. <laughs> <laughs> but the first doctor. Were they born in the hospital or outside? Yes, in. Okay. Because Kaiser, I might sure, probably shouldn't say anything about Kaiser. I'm sure they're <laughs> allegedly. They mean well, allegedly people were, could be born outside. Allegedly. <laughs> uh, the delivery room. The lights better outside. <laughs> the, uh, um, but we had. A, I only have one daughter. But we had a great, and had a great doctor. And weeks before mine was going to be born, the dude goes, I'm going away, and I, I won't be here when you have the baby. And he recommended I, another do doctor. <laughs> Did they do that? They do, I hear that all of the time. Whoa. My doctor's having a Whoa. second kid like two months after me. I was like. Whoa. Good timing. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta but, sync up. But you know, but yeah. you know, but you know that. And then you got a random doctor for is, the delivery. Is that a? That's not a move, though, is it? Is it a move they put? No, up? I just think it happens, and it's because sucks. the doctor that she had was not the doctor she was familiar with, uh-huh. and she had struggled during labor, and and uh, oh, excuse me, and, and you know, damage where I think. If you had your person that had been with you for the whole nine months, Mm -hmm. and I don't know, I hope that's not something that they do, but yeah. That sucks. Because you've been going to the person from day one, all of a sudden, the weeks before, you're like, hey, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be in in Morocco, (laughs) you know, yeah. Yeah. Who, how did you recommend? uh, I actually um, had this doctor before I got pregnant. I had like a surgery I needed, and so he's, he's been with me. Okay, good. On a journey already. Good. So. And when is your delivery date? Um, end of May, May 29th. Ah. Have you had the shower yet? No, you want to come? 
If I'm wrong, I want, I want some mariachis. Where, where did you? Uh, where uh, are you gonna shower have? Shower is April twenty third. That's my birthday. It is. Yeah. Well, then you should come. Shit, I'll be in Atlanta. <laughs> it's not Atlanta, is it? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be even crazier. <laughs> so, uh, um, but I, I would like to uh, um, know when the child is born to send a uh, present. I Eleven will. babies are born. Oh, okay. Yeah, and and. He has uh, his both balls and I've seen the penis. You've seen the penis yeah. and the thing? Mm -hmm. Yep. So wow. It's good. <laughs> Off to a great start. And the good sacks. For you. I've seen it all. You want to see it? Good for yeah. you. I'll show you a picture. So before well, for the camera. When we were coming up, if you saw something that looked like like a fucking beginning of a dust storm, they'd go, it's a boy. You know, there's right. The, na, <laughs> right. Now you can see features. Oh yeah. You can see everything. When with ours, right? It was just fucking nothing. You can no. see nothing. No. I never saw anything any of my kids. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of times you just... Let's see it. Do you have it? Yeah. Do you mind? Yeah. No. Now they have those crazy, like, almost 3D-looking pictures they can do. I don't that's know if that's what, what you've is. got. Okay, yeah. You know, when when, so when we first went, and it was validated that she was, Anne was pregnant, there was a blinking light. That's the heart. Mm-hmm. And, and when my, my aunt had, like, three months to go, I said in there, I said... Well, hey, can we pull her out and play with her and put her back in? Nah. You know, and they said, "Oh, you got to wait three months." And three months seemed like the fucking longest in the world. Twenty-six years later, here wow. you go. And the three months to me seemed that's for you, even Mark's boy. That's got this kid's got, his nuts are bigger than mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rocking it, holy! So this is a sack, and then. In there is where they will settle into. My nephew had a sack. Yo, this is right here. When the, he comes out, we're going to go clubbing. Man. We're going to take, <laughs> take him clubbing and use him as a magnet to pull chicks. Because he's got some, oh, some balls right there. They look like a catamaran. Yeah, like, I got to see. Like, the, see. like the dick and then the other. Uh, you see goodness. the penis too, right? Damn, yeah. yeah. Hard to avoid. <laughs> Listen. Excellent work. He, he, even Thank though you. he's not in the world, I'm game. embarrassed. If I knew I had, was going to be born with a big dick, I might have become a different person. <laughs> <laughs> there's okay, something to there's something too. This is how alien he looks. You can see his face. Wow. His hand oh, is yeah. by his, like this. Oh, that's more that real I 3D mean, thing. Yeah. That's so crazy. I mean, that is just incredible. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Oh, Look wow. That. That's incredible. Yeah, it looks like dude. sculpted out of clay. Mm hmm. That's some shit like Mine Hunter. You know, like they put that shit up on that the That could be me. It could be you. Yeah. <laughs> and their heads are um, soft, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like soft. Yeah, they even got like the little hole at the start, don't they? Their brain doesn't congeal till much you, later. Do you like, know when mine was born at Cedars and I went with her down the hall, walking down the hall, and they were cleaning her. And to see a human head like shift, mm. uh, and because she's just born, it's, 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 uh, were you in there when they were? It's wow, man. And knowing that, I might have said, "Can we pull a little bit, a little bit flat of the back? Can we pull just a little bit, out, like a filter now with the picture, like just because you could see it, right. you could see it like almost like a water balloon, like like shift." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Very exciting though. I don't yeah. remember I mean, that stuff. I think that I'm very. Were you in the room when you're a first? miracle child? Yes. Because we had a little bit of, uh, what were you saying? Oh, you, yeah, you had problems. We had a little bit of a scare in the beginning, so he survived. Awesome. Congrats, yeah. 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 You know, I don't think that there's anything in your life that you, you will have happen to you where spontaneously you will feel the emotion of seeing that mm -hmm. boy come out. Yeah. Oh? Huh? Yeah. I cried a lot as a kid, but I never cried spontaneous. Right. Until I saw mine for the first time. Yeah. And, and, and when you don't have kids, I remember watching 60 Minutes, and, th and they said, when you don't have kids, you don't think of people who have kids or you know, have something happen to a kid until you're a parent, mm -hmm. and then you worry about everybody else's kids, and mm -hmm. it's true. Like, if you don't have any reference, right. and you see a kid that's like, hey, are you okay? And it's like, oh, I lost my mom, you know, where you, before you, and you become that, and was, went way beyond, my, my wife was like, like a Karen before they were Karens. Right. And I would be like, Ann, <laughs> that strap is not on in the in the baby bajorn. It's the baby's gonna fall. Like, Ann, fucking just, you know, <laughs> everything was her her issue. Yeah. So so um, and uh, will he be born in Los Angeles? Yes, at Cedars. Ah, 
Ah. Very good. That's what, that's what my daughter I'm glad I'm not wrong. in person, yeah. Kaiser. Uh, after and, 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 and I go to Cedars now, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and as a, and as a, um, as a couple, um, when you go and get the updates, it, it, it gets more exciting now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and getting through all those first tests are the, you know, they test at 20 weeks, 16 weeks, 20 weeks, and then, because they can test for everything now you know i'm glad that they didn't have that when we were being born where they could tell you i think my grandmother would have said you know what hey pull a plug <laughs> keep them <laughs> i think i would have said frida you should not nah, let's go eat i think because i think i i would say that you know now all yeah. the kids are tested and when we were growing up you just looked different one day they would go come over here <laughs> You don't have fucking eyelids? You're like, I wasn't born without them. I never know. Okay. Right, go ahead. Your eyes don't dry up? Uh-uh. Oh, uh-uh. Good. Like you, you, one right. day you look different right. to them, right. and then they find out you were pigeon-toed or, you know, you were left-handed. Right. But not like now the whole gamut of, of, of tests. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. And, yeah. So. And, and. You just perished all the tests. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Hey, is there, do people, do women still crave like, like. Um, weird stuff? Is that still stuff? happening? Yeah. Yeah, mine has been really strange. I'm eating like a 14-year-old teenage boy kind yeah, of. Yeah, I know. And you just feel it, right? Like, it, how did, does it, what, 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 first of all, what, what are the cravings? Well, in the beginning, I was very sick. I, like, just nauseous. Mm-hmm. Never threw up. Just like, imagine your worst hangover all day long. All day long. That's for like 17 weeks. Oh. So, oh back then it was mac and cheese. And oh, yeah. A special kind or from someplace? Or? Um, because like I, I, I wanted all like the original flavoring, like craft, or just, just you know, like oh, let's yeah. take it back to what I ate. But did you up. like craft coming growing up? Yeah, but yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But then I wanted to get some protein in my diet, so I like tried some of those fancy mac and cheeses. Yeah, but they were, they also not, good. They were yeah. okay. They were they were okay. But craft. Yeah, the original. You know, there's something to. I like the homemade stuff. I like that. Yeah, the homemade stuff is good. Yeah. The little noodles, the craft little noodles. I'm oh, not sure yeah. what they are, but it could be part of that wall right there. But <laughs> Peanut were, butter and jelly was yeah, a big one. Yeah. Still what kind of jelly that. or grape? Um, it was more like a berry. Yeah, like a I like a raspberry. Yeah, like a blackberry. Blackberry. Or, oh shit, blackberry. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think if you're into blackberry and peanut butter, then you are pregnant because that's like that's <laughs> that's a total crave. Very weird. And yeah. in the middle of the night, any of that stuff, like, I, but Elvis would go get peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in Denver, and he was in Memphis. Right. Well, that was drugs. <laughs> right, that's different. <laughs> yeah. But in the middle of the night, do you, do you say like, oh, you got to go get me? Uh, if I no, I don't. I don't like need a hamburger in the middle of the night, but I will do like cinnamon toast crunch. Oh uh, yeah. Cereal. Can't go Cereal. <laughs> and then the weirdest craving recently has been oranges. I'll have like six oranges a day. Really? That's just like the vitamin. As long as they're good and juicy, I love them. Yeah, I really have. Right. I've but been eating a lot of also, did the doctor say that's too much sugar or? They tested me for gestational diabetes and I was good. So. Okay, but remember when when yeah. they would say you oh. don't have a glass of oranges in the morning, but there's a lot of sugar in it. Yeah. And nobody thought about. I know. The sugar of it. I've been going more for the sweets than the savory, way more than I do in my real life. Way more. Um, uh, seafood or anything like that? Like, uh, no. Do you eat breakfast at night? Yeah, I like. I breakfast love breakfast. Oh. If you could eat something at night for breakfast, what would it be? What would it be? <laughs> it's all I ever used to eat when Pancakes? I was in Vegas. Oh. What'd you eat? Sausage. Eggs, sausage, yeah. and hash browns. Yeah. Sourdough toast. Can't go wrong. Oh, sourdough. Yeah. Um, Aaron. True. Yeah. Uh, any kind of egg scramble, egg, bacon, mushroom. Uh, Frosted Flakes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. In a big ass bowl. Yes. With a lot of milk. Do you add a banana? Yes. Yes. And That's I cut it with a knife, my grandma. With, with, a, with a spoon. Yeah. My grandma taught me how to cut the knife with a spoon. It's not a major trick or anything. <laughs> she made it seem like she was teaching me how to walk. Check this out. <laughs> Check this spoon. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. But and when you grow up, I think when you grow up poor, I don't think you have to be pregnant. But you could have. Yeah. A lot of times we had breakfast for dinner, growing up. When really? I when I grew up, honestly, I, I don't remember eating breakfast. Yeah, I, I really don't. Just went straight for lunch. 
Yeah, at school. Well, your dad probably where your dad was. Your dad gone working, and my dad was gone working. My mom was gone working. When I became old enough, I had two younger sisters. I would, my sister reminds me, I used to make them breakfast, mm-hmm. and she used to get mad at me because I'd make her eat raw pancakes. <laughs> You're supposed to be like that. Eat them. <laughs> you know? Also, you were ahead of your time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, siblings? Two. I'm the oldest. Would uh, Would they make you carry on adult duties as a child? Like, you know, they, they how they did that. Like, watch your brother and sister, or watch yeah. your brothers, oh, or yeah. you got to be like you can't go because you have to watch yeah. your brothers. <laughs> uh, where did you grow up here? In uh, no, I grew up in Chicago, in Evanston. The greatest place in the world. And and yeah, Chicago will. It's a good. You have a good background when you come from Chicago. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. Working class people, they don't favor anyone. And they used to be the no. way real people used to be. Right. They were honest, mm. and they were tough, and they worked hard, and they weren't. When I was uh, started, I went to a Cubs game, and I was working at the funny firm in the early '90s, and I'm mm. sitting down in the bar on the way way back. Couldn't get a cab, so I walked. And there's a guy sitting next to me, and he looks at, he's staring at me, and he goes. Are you a comedian? I said, yeah. You're not bad. You're not good, but you're not bad. <laughs> and I said, man, oh, man, thank you. That, that, and, that, and that is, right? That is right. A, where, the where now you're going to tell kids everything they want to hear. Yeah. He said, I saw you. You're not great. You're not bad. And and that's uh, w- w- under what under what form of childhood w- are you going to raise? Are you a, are you a helicopter parent? No. Which they call them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a term. Um, what 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 kind of parent should I be? <laughs> what kind of parent what, what are you, kind of, George? What, kind of you feel? what is, what is a helicopter parent? <laughs> where, where they hover where they, like, over the hover kid? And they, like, oh, yeah, way too involved. Wait. Have you guys talked about that? I mean, you want to make sure they're safe, but not to mm. where you, you're over overly. Yes, but I also think I don't. I don't want. I don't want like we're not best friends, right? Like I'm your I'm your mom. Come on. Because exactly. I see all these parents that, that's now good stuff. wanting to be You're best not, friends. Don't with be your best kid, friend, and it fucks the kids up. I mean, I have friends who have mom parents like that, and it's not what they wanted. It's not what they needed. You, you know? know, totally. Kids Kid didn't ask go for a best get a friend. friend. <laughs> you can have a best yeah. friend. That's great. I'm your mom. Okay. What's the number again? Eight one eight five three three. Okay, here's, here's what I think is a great. Damn right. You, that, that's and you know what? I don't think I've ever heard a woman say. I'm not going to be that type of parent. It's how about when we were growing up and you saw boys that were demasculated, mm-hmm. emasculated at a young age already. They were, they were already like pussies at like seven. Like they couldn't <laughs> walk home and they couldn't be alone and they cried if you fucking wet them with a hose. Yeah, I mean, My I, best friend, I can still hear his mother today, and everybody's deceased, but I can still hear her today. <laughs> if you don't. Do what I say. Wait till your father gets home tonight, mister, right. because I'm not wearing it. I'm going to school. That's my best friend. We're going walking together, and I'm not wearing a jacket. We don't need a jacket. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to. I told you to wear a jacket, mister. You're not, wait till your father comes home tonight. And why did, if she felt that strong, why didn't she just beat the shit out of him then? <laughs> That's what she should have done. You want to make one the good person and one the bad one. Yeah. 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 Good cop, bad cop. Yeah. But I like, I like, I mean, I mean, listen, I was doing a show Saturday and I was talking about people who have kids that have food that can't touch. Right. And where it came from. And there's a lady, a rather young lady, and she says, I have a daughter that can't eat if the food touches. And I said, well, how old is she? She said, fucking 30. I mean, come on. I mean, do you, I don't. Let her go I fucking don't, hungry then. But what, what, what is it though? At what point did kids say like, I, I don't like this play. I don't like that. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, and. And why and was that like, the, ex- why was the follow up to that like, okay, okay cool. Yeah, fine. Don't, don't eat right. it. No. So I just, I looked it up. Apparently there's a term for it. It's brumotactylophobia. Is what? brumotactylophobia when you don't like your foods to touch, and it's considered, and it comes in varying levels of uh, severity, and is believed to be a very mild form of OCD. Mm. Who we were talking about earlier. But if I see foot culo, <laughs> <laughs> children under, uh, oh, yeah. So um, 
because that's what happened. That's what happened. With kids' friends, I would say you have to make sure that the friends are o- are okay. Right. Because, you know, um, if they with, with mine, I would say if they see something, they can't unsee it. So you want to make sure that that whoever their friends were weren't going on the computer at their house because right. we had filters on the computer at at our house. Right. And that's 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 the issue. No, for sure. But, it kills uh, me right now. I got two of my younger grandkids. They get to choose what they want to eat, and I'm <laughs> so tall. You know, my grandmother. Used that's to make a big me, thing. You know, my grandmother would make me choose. She said, "You could have that, or you can eat shit." Those are the two choices. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I tell my kids. I, I tell the grandkids. They don't understand. I said, "Come mierda." Uh, that's what you know when mom's not around. And your, come your partner have ha, do you have the same beliefs um, in in child rearing? Yes, and he has a thirteen year old. Okay, so that's cool. I think I've been able to observe. You got a bit of a babysitter, <laughs> built in, right, which is good too. Which is good too because uh, um, would you? I know I can't, I can't see who it was somebody. There's two people that were very uh, they were known. And they were dating, and they were very much in love, and they could not agree on how to raise the mm-hmm. child, and they broke up. Really? They, were, they didn't have a kid, but they said, "What are your views on on how to raise a mm-hmm. child?" And they were very, very different, and they couldn't agree, and they sure. broke up. Wow! Before even it. having the before child. even having a baby, I could see it. I really well, can. But but would would that be an issue? Do you, you think of, uh, or would you say, "Well, we'll work it out"? But if someone was adamant about. God, I mean, yeah, I mean, if it, was, if it was a huge difference than what I envisioned. Yeah, I've seen my you... older sisters go through it. And what? And what are the what are the issues of it? They ended up in divorce mm. because one was too easy, uh, or one didn't want this, and don't tell my kids what to do, and this is it. And one was wrong, and one was right, in my opinion, and he left. Good mm. move. Mm. The wrong and right thing is, uh, uh, and also if you if you have a mother or uh, in law or someone who has more of where they think they're right all the time, they would say, "I wouldn't let her do that if I were you. I wouldn't right. let him do that, but it's not your child." And then mm-hmm. that's why it goes up like like a powder cake. <laughs> right. How, are you looking forward to it? <laughs> so far, I'm making it all sick. Hey, this is the best time right now. Incubation is the best time. And you know, and, and, and also, the thing when you realize when you're, when you're leaving with a baby is in the car seat, because I don't have the car seat, is that there's no manual, there's no, there's only no. what you've prepared yeah. for, and then you get home and it gets colicky and it cries for seven days in a row, and both you and your partner are ready to fucking throw each other out the window, <laughs> and it's colic, and right. it just happens, yeah. where they don't stop crying. On the job training. Yeah. Mine, you know, we live in an apartment here, and I would get up in the, and would go to the baby, and I would go to the kitchen and get the milk, and... You know, it would be 40 seconds, but Anne would be like, hurry up, and it'd be like 32, 31, <laughs> and she goes, come on, and she'd be screaming, and uh, um, it was it was so in the middle of the night that I would forget to put the fucking bottle, in. I would close the microwave and set it for 40 seconds, and then turn it on, and I would leave the bottle of milk on the counter, and you look at the thing, uh, and it wouldn't even be in there, I was so, t- I was so tired. But there, straight. yeah. But it's, it's exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. We want to see a picture. We want to be uncles. I will. And we're going to sure. send a Mexican blanket because, you know, and, and all kids born now should have a, some culture exactly. in their life. Exactly. Agreed. Yeah. I do think, though, um, there's some responsibility as a woman raising a man, a boy. Oh. You know? I like that, yeah. I, I think I think a lot of, you know, a lot of people blame, you know, what, what if you want to, like... <laughs> Put some quotes around like toxic masculinity or whatever. I may say something controversial here. No, that's what I say. We love controversy. But um, I think a lot of it comes from the mothering of boys. Every boy needs a father, obviously, right? But uh, I'm gonna say that I didn't. I never knew my father. My father took off, and um, all the guys I grew up with had fathers. Mm. And I said in elementary school. Every boy needs a father. And I was like 12. Mm. 12 year olds shouldn't say that. 
Yeah. But at Father's Day and and having my grandmother around, it's all very difficult. So yes, speak on that because I think you're you're most definitely three three children, mm-hmm. two girls and a boy. The right. last one was a boy. Right. He's now forty four years old. Mm. Every boy needs a father, but every girl needs a father. Oh well, yes. They all need. Well, both, what we're saying parents. is, and 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 my son turned out to be nothing like his father. Right. That I doesn't mean that. that I love him. Love him. Any I wouldn't less. say that. I love him. He's got the biggest heart in the world. He's a great son. So he's not like you. He's not like well because I'm heterosexual. He's gay. Okay. It doesn't mean a damn thing. I love him to death. We talk to each other every day. I wouldn't trade him for the world. You only talk one time a day? Uh, sometimes. We really okay, do. so, so um, thanks, Aaron. In, 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 <laughs> You're but, the only one but, laughing, but, Aaron. But, but can we, no, let's, let's go back to that. But I want to I talk about what you, what you were saying, because I agree. Well, yeah, I just, you know, and watching my mom, you know, I have a sister and a brother, and watching how she sort of raised my brother versus us, I think there's sometimes a bit of a coddling that happens with moms and sons and sort of like, oh, that's fine. You're you're, you're so cute. You're do what you do. And like and it it's, doesn't propel okay. the boy into society in a way that is actually. If, if we're to believe the way that we're raised, that the man is the is the keeper of the house. Right. What you're saying is what we heard growing up where. The boy was 15 and the girl was 13 and she would say, make your brother breakfast, paint the house and keep your eye on him. And he did nothing. Correct. And that's where I think in, the, in where we grew up, the girls were like, I mean, listen, man, they, they should not have chores or take care of somebody who's older than them just because of right. what uh, uh, they, however somebody was raised. Right. Yeah. Six sisters. Paint the house. I said, no six. brothers. Wow. Two younger than me. The four older didn't take care of me. I took care of the two younger ones. And I would cook for them. I would do everything for them. But that's and rare now. I don't know because I didn't live in anybody else's house. Well, 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 the, the, so the other four, like, they, they didn't. Two of them got married early. You know, they were gone. They got the fuck out, so they yeah, were like, I'm out. They, they, yeah. And, but uh, the others were just. And then nobody, I wasn't uh, spoiled until I went into the Army. When I went into the Army, then I came back, then I became spoiled. Listen, if you have to go and to then, Vietnam to feel spoiled, you know, then <laughs> your, home, your home life is like a yeah. mother- Can you imagine? You go to Vietnam, brrr, you're in a helicopter going, listen, man, Woo! it's fucking awesome. You just see step up, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it's like. So I became spoiled with a the family then. The iron fist is not the way to get it done either. No. Or not no. listening right. to somebody when they have no. something to say. And shut I up. Love- it was a shut up. And right. I love them today. Yeah. You know, we're all, my family is very, very close. And my two daughters that are older and my my son, we're all very, very close. He Let me ask a question. Day. In, in, if you could go back and be honest, don't worry about your wife listening. I'm not going to. I don't answer, even all like her All your answers anymore. have to do with whether your wife's listening or not. You've made me hate her now. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> Would you have wanted your sisters to be more caring of you? No. Okay. No, it, it was... Find the way it was. It's hard to say something that's that's. Uh, it, 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 it was right. fine. It was fine the way it was because they were gone, and then yeah, you I'm, took I'm, you took the part that they probably should have had as older. They got married and yeah. got out. Yeah, yeah. So for the most part, three of them got got married, got out. One stood there a while longer, but it was just a family. Mm-hmm. You were saying you know one TV in one room, one in the other. Yeah, we only had one TV. Mm-hmm. You know, so it would be, okay, you get a half hour, you get a half hour, and it'd be my half hour, and then they'd start screaming, Mom, he just wants to watch sports. None of us want to watch sports. Mm. Okay, camilo, cabron. So I'd have to change from Did sports. you ever have to change the TV with players? Yeah. You know, that. You're, you're too young for that. Yeah, so I... Well, what um, would happen when you, when you guys were growing up and you were having a feeling or you were emotional about something <laughs> or... A girl Ooh. broke your heart or something happened at school where um, a bully punched you in the face. Nah. What did you do? No, How that, did that, you deal with that? I, I, I dealt with it with my friends, you know, the, the guys on the block. 
we shared everything. That became the guys on the block became my family. Mm. Not this family, but they became my family. Because at 17, a cop took me home and said, told my parents, get him off the streets, he'll end up dead or in prison. So at 17, they signed for me, and I went in. But, I mean, it was the guys on the block became my family. And you, and felt, you felt safe enough to be open? and Yes. Okay. Them, oh, most assuredly. We all shared stuff. Uh, uh, the, the guy that uh, I named my first show, the character Ernie, I knew him before I was even in first grade, passed away like uh, three weeks ago. Mm. Yes. So he did my first friend, my first friend passed away. So yesterday we had the memorial and um, he had a family. Like he had sisters and brothers and a mother and father and I didn't. My mm -hmm. grandparents raised me and my grandfather wasn't my biological grandfather. And my mom, mom was my grandmother. And when you think about how easy it could have been for him to neglect me to not call me or not include me you think about how great this guy was that he didn't turn his back on me when he knew mm -hmm. i didn't have many friends and that he stayed with me and would say hey let's go do this let's go do that let's go do that when at home he had way more than i ever had i didn't, never knew my father and my mother didn't raise me and you know toward the end of his life we weren't as close but you know what that didn't matter as much as how important he was in the beginning of of my life mm -hmm. like i couldn't remember when i didn't know him and to say goodbye is a is like a really 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 tough thing mm. you know especially when you realize that all the things that i like golf playing the guitar richard pryor and <laughs> comedy all were his idea i must have been a student before i had zero <laughs> ideas but you know um i'm the godfather to his son too so mm -hmm. i you know it was step into i never had a son but, but um it, it, to neglect a child especially when it's like neglecting a plant that needs water and needs sun is the worst fucking thing that you can do to a, a child right so i think mothers that over our uh, over or do too much for the boy is really devastating to his future relationships right you've got is that what you got to have think? friends you, you know they they need mother and father but they also need outside connections right they they really do and i was blessed enough to go back city of pico rivera where i grew up in i was asked to be the keynote speaker at an event mm. they had and i told them pico rivera they say it takes a village to raise a child. Pico Rivera was my village. Mm. You know, you go anywhere. People, back then, you know, you mess up on the block, somebody else's parents would, you know, they'd rat you out, they'd kick your ass, they'd yell at you, they'd do everything. So everything, they, they kept you all in check. Right. And it was it was the village that kept me there. Community. And I'm fortunate so enough important. to have mm -hmm. friends today that still remind me. I went to a celebration of life about a month ago a lot of my old friends from the block and it was just as if we hadn't seen each other in years it was great seeing yeah. everybody and the the fact that time goes by so fast right yes uh yeah so um what were you going to say about the moms in the oh about they go over they're, they're too coddling of them or yeah or just they don't allow them to be them to be to have an independence yeah or yeah or just sort of like Treat, they're treated differently. Yeah. They're just put more on a pedestal maybe yeah, than the girls. I think so. Um, and then on, on the flip side of that, they they aren't cultivating like a well-rounded human. If a girl, if you have a teenager and the father's like, she's going out, she has a hickey, you're a whore, but then the boy right, is an like athlete. Right, like this. Yeah. Right? Were you ever told to man up? Or be, just be a man. My grandfather or, used to tell me uh, that men don't cry, right. and forever. I've Excessive. never, I, I, I would never heard that as a kid, nor did I ever say that to my son. Mm. Or they said no says mamon, which means like don't be a pussy. Right. And we heard that. And what? And then what do you? How did you interpret that? I, it's not to show emotion. Right. To close down. Right. Yeah, I can't believe I talked about Ernie and I did not shed a tear, which is mm. very I, I, impressive. I remember talking about Ernie. Yeah, but but I do believe that that. You know, and I think it's, it's in, in the generations, and even as the generations keep going and you think that 
more women are reading books or, or however you get your information, it still kind of reverts back to being an overbearing parent. Right. You know, right. like you, is it, is, it, is it against the books that you are reading versus what your mom did and your grandmother did and her grandmother did where it's all kind of a routine? Right. My mom was tough. And the shit that you go through in the beginning of your life, almost I remember pop up video where they would say, "Oh, this was filmed in L.A." and they go, Poop, and, "You know, mm. it's almost like you wish your life Pleasure. could be like a pop up video." So when someone <laughs> says something to you, and they come up and say, "This shit's gonna hurt you for a long, long time," <laughs> that you were able to identify the right. things that were gonna be devastating to right. you later. Totally. Like I was never able to really kind of connect with a person uh, um, uh, romantically because it, it, I was. Just never saw a healthy relationship, and then as a comedian, you become innocuous to fear or nerves because mm -hmm. you're 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 shut down already. You're like, like a veneer. But where you know, if you had a healthy relationship, you you would be something that you go, man, I'm so nervous because right. oh, I'm here. You know, it's like I was by myself all the time, so I Vulnerable never had somebody exposed. say I'm here. Yeah. Let somebody see you and all that. What what is your before? What is your podcast? Uh, <laughs> before we it's no, but I think pregnancy. those are, are those great. Are those great points? I, I think they're listen, man. I think they're, I, want, I had a very, 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 very difficult childhood. And not yeah. by, by abuse, but just being alone. Yeah. And being alone is the fucking worst. Even if you have a guitar or you're watching TV, you're still fucking alone. Yeah. And that no kid should be alone in a house where there's another adult in there. And they'd prefer mm -hmm. that you sit in the room by yourself than to come and sit next to them and, 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 and take part in something. No, that's traumatizing. That's oh, yeah. that's yeah. pretty bad, and and yeah. and people do because you know if, if you're looking at your phone, or you see something on social media where like a little boy is taking a picture of his mom and his mom is all sexy trying to pose, like man, that's no, no, no. That's, you can't, no. you can't. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. She's a good-looking mom. No, no, no. <laughs> and she's like up higher. You know, I'm only two feet tall. Um, <laughs> let's talk about your podcast. Uh, yeah, it's called Was I in a Cult? <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> I love the title. Um, it is a it's a documentary style. Pot. I, I my co-host is Tyler Mason, and he's a doc filmmaker, and um, I bring the comedy to the. Yes, what documentaries have you, has he? To, what, there, is it behavioral? Is it not about pregnancy, but is it behavioral as a as a scope of, you, of the way people behave, or is it about when the show itself is about people who have been in cults and survived them? Wow, you were a sheriff. It's heavy stuff. Yeah, it is heavy stuff, but it's uplifting. It's inspiring. It's not doom and gloom. We sort of take a different approach to cults than how many anything. Has how ever. many people? Like, you know, if it's sold out, even though there's a couple of still single tickets, they call it a sellout. Mm -hmm. How many people co are considered a cult? How many people do you have to have to believe in you to be considered a cult? Well, you can be in a one-on-one -on -one cult. Uh, that's you, you and your Marriage. Wife. You and Pearl. <laughs> what she tells you Me what and to Pearl do. And what she tells me. <laughs> and you, uh, you're locked in. Yeah. So, so I... First of all, I never heard anybody say you could be in the cult with just another person. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So that's sort of what the show is doing as well. It's just breaking down the stereotypes of what constitutes a cult and exposing how many cults there are. There are so many cults. Um, uh, 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 a cult of, um, let's uh, give us some examples of cults. Uh, there's religious cults, Okay. right? We know, so we we know have, that, yeah. We have mm -hmm. some ones you've heard of, like... Polygamists, Mormon cults, right. right? You've heard of that. Right. You've heard of Scientology. Yeah. Um, we don't have a Scientologist yet, but then we have a woman who was her mother was her cult leader, so it was a family cult, and we t she tells that story. So, which I kind of, if the was the mother mentally ill or was mm -hmm. just just yeah. I would say well, all cult leaders are NPD, narcissistic personality mm. disorder. And then on top of it, they're usually sociopathic. Jim Jones? Yeah. That's a, it's a bad combo. That's quite a combination <laughs> there. Yeah. And, um, but we have other, um, we have, the stories are amazing. And, and, and we're, we're telling the story through the individual's experience. So, okay, so unlike yeah. a lot of cult stuff you see, it's focused on the cult itself and the crazy cult leader. Right. This is about somebody's journey in, during, and out. Okay, that's... 
Is there a, are there documentaries that we can watch anywhere or are well, is, the, your the, podcast is how can people see like that's the shit I, that's what we what are going to make a show but we haven't made it yet so okay. right now you can just listen to the story okay you know it's kind of really man I mean and and that would fascinate me oh yeah but also let's think but about we do this. make we do make jokes and we bring lightness to oh, it because cults okay. aren't all doom and gloom which is the way it should which, uh, also which is the way it should be right because in order to in order to if you are attacking something somebody will shut down but exactly. if you're making light of it they might leave their mind open enough to get you to think shit that you know what that is that's that is that's well it right. humanizes it, it, it right yeah, it humanizes, humanizes the experience the guest feels seen not just like oh you weird cult person yeah. right because we really show that anybody is susceptible to falling into right. An environment like this and um, so that's why we have the before story we get to really know you as a human before you met before you went to this presentation or your friend took you to this coffee shop or it's, it's usually it's even, it's even like that yeah uh, so, so run me run me through do we have time we have time right uh, yeah we have about 10 minutes Bill Burr is not here for another an hour uh, the uh, run me through how someone would take somebody to a coffee shop and then get involved in something that would be considered a cult. So, you know, n have you heard of the whole Nexium scandal? Yeah, I okay. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you so, heard of Nexium? No. Bro, that... Great, great girl, Jessica Joan, episode three, I think, on the show, three and four. Um, she was actually the whistleblower. She worked with the FBI for two years to take him down. Um, wow. She's, well, she's, she's a badass. Yeah, yeah. She's a badass. So, she got invited by... One, like a, a, a masseuse, her masseuse, or something to like a, just come to this presentation. There's, and, and you know, they always get you with snacks. It's always <laughs> free wine and, and mm -hmm. snacks. So she just went to this event, this night, um, harmless, free. Was it, at a, was it like a- Was it somebody's uh, living room? Yeah. And it was just a pre it was just a simple presentation. And and was the woman there? Not Keith Raniere. But nope, he wasn't there. She wasn't was there just yet. A conduit. Um. Yep. It was one of their recruiters, and it was sort of like you know we, this is a self help, um, space where we just help you become the best you you can be, and this is how we do it, and this is what it looks like, and then look at all these examples around you, and look at all these people, and then all the people tell their testimonies and. Um, they man. they position it as a class. Yeah, as almost like a a self help. This is how I started to use my time more wisely. There's a thing called the Vow on HBO, and it's I mean yeah, two seasons. Or something. Yeah, and, the second season is coming, and out. it starts oh. with like if we said you know we want to be a little bit more. Um, you wouldn't want to say aggressive, mm -hmm. just savvy mm -hmm. in business. Mm -hmm. And you know, do you know how many times people neglect their own self in order to put someone else ahead? And then they start to use, push the buttons and they kind of have you. And then it becomes where they're almost, I don't know, brainwashing that. Well, that's the whole thing we show, right? We show the indoctrination process yeah. and mm -hmm. how manipulative and slow burning it is mm -hmm. and then so it's like a it's like a you put a frog in lukewarm water and he's just having a bath and you turn the heat on by the time the water's boiling he he's boiled to and death it's, he can't jump it's, up. and it's and that's the analogy of getting indoctrinated and they were in canada they were in mexico they had people in mexico that were in even in the uh, presidential families yeah oh, no. and the can well I say that's that? the other thing too they recruit a lot of powerful they, they, people, rich people. They recruited a couple of, of daughters who were very high up in a alcohol family that created, you know, famous alcohols. And they kind of started to write the bill for this person right. to attach himself to the Dalai Lama or attach himself to different people where from the outside it looked like they paid they were the Dalai Lama a million dollars to, to sit there and the Dalai Lama was on the to them the Dalai Lama and he was on Mr. holier than <laughs> thou himself and he was on to but he got on to him though yeah when, well, he, when, he, when they went to go visit him oh right right he, later he, he later was, he was on right, to right, him right right yeah. right yeah but uh, yeah when you think of the well, I can say that with the Dalai but, but, but <laughs> if you are okay but but <laughs> it can it can be it can be like 
where they where they infiltrate. I'm not infiltrate. Not the right word. They start where somebody would recruit. say to you, recruit. I have a new friend, Gil. He's he's he likes the same things that you like. Yeah. And then you go, and now you're like kind of like you're you're starting to connect the dots, right? Right. And like it, it's interesting because it's sort of full circle. It goes back to like community and how we we crave community as humans. We want that feeling of belonging, and so they prey on that and they exploit that in different ways Mm -hmm. and they make you feel like they have what you've been missing correct Mm -hmm. with the group hug and the clapping and the but but is is the neck is that one what are the top five but you said also little ones like amongst amongst people in neighborhoods i'm sure probably right maybe in what in in neighborhoods and things that aren't as big yeah exactly like um is an hoa a cult like (laughs) <laughs> which is spooky, man. Like it's spooky. Well, it's spooky. If if all of a sudden you go home and your and Pearl's not there, or we go home and and you're not there, and all of a sudden they come back and they're happy and they say, "Where were you? Oh, we we meet every Wednesday yeah. and we do this." And you think, "Oh, okay, that's cool." So Wednesday you're going to be over there. But then as it progresses, right. it turns into it turns. Yeah, and it all goes back to the leader, right? That's right. the difference between a cult and just a men's group. Is do you have a narcissistic? sociopathic leader starting to dictate your behavior your choices do you start to doubt yourself do you start to have to ask this person oh is this do you think i should do this but that person has to be put on a pedestal so that when you meet him you're like oh my god there he is right and then he starts Mm -hmm. to tell you things and you're like you know you're a people pleaser like you just want to please people and you're like <laughs> and they right. just start to push the the buttons. Oh, and then they'll say, "But George, you are so brilliant, and you're so funny, and you would you would be so good here." I mean, I I can see where you're lacking in some areas, mm-hmm. and I can help you with that. It's like when but, they give you Botox, where they say you got <laughs> like you don't need a lot, just right here. And once they put it right here, yeah. forget it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but 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 that's but they chip away, they chip away at it. Yeah. And then you they get, build you up, and then a little breakdown, and then in the in that thing we told you with the vow, where the guy was a documentary and filmmaker, and then he meets a girl that was an actress, and they connect. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she starts to think like this shit doesn't really kind of make sense, and blows the whistle. Right. And then the husband stays on this side while the wife goes on that side. Right. Right, and you're like, wow, like he's like, right. boo, you know, I think you're, you're, you're overreacting, like it's not that. Right, and and fortunately, they 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 worked they worked they it found, out. Yeah, they yeah, found yeah, themselves yeah, 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 yeah. No, but that's also what happens. That whole separation, us versus them mentality. There's all these through doing this show. I've become quite the <laughs> is there um, cult expert. Is there a connective? Is there a connective? Uh, thing to the country or is it regional like is there something that connects in california that goes to the midwest and back to the and back east well yeah there's there's cults that have um headquarters all over you know some yeah. cults are religious cults so those have a lot of like a lot of the non-denominational christian cults are have headquarters okay or not headquarters, but have locations in, in can, many different cities. And, and have you have you guys um, uh, had people come out? I'm sure you have to. But there people that monitor them. You can't say. Yeah. No, we haven't had anybody Wait come out. <laughs> we had um, one woman who came on. Who her she was in a cult. It it it, it was a, her boss, and it was a small environment. And she listened to our show. And she, you know, reached out and said, "I need to tell my story." And I now realize what I was wasn't just a toxic work environment. He's a cult leader, and he, he raped her, and she went through the system to get that. And he has all these people working in. This is in Na- Nashville, and he has people behind the scenes. So nothing ever happened Are you to him. Off? No, but, but, but we never say his name. But he did reach out to us and said, I deny all claims. And then he said, some, and I don't drive a Ferrari. It's a, <laughs> some other car. And we're like, you just got accused of rape, dude. And you're correcting what kind of, what kind car, of car you drive. Well, it's actually 2006. <laughs> but, but, but also, you know, we're talking about how courageous um, Leah is. You, you too. That, like, that's a, 
that's a heavy yeah because they, I know. because you know if somebody calls you a bad catholic or they say you know you're the, you're a heathen for not going to church they don't follow you home yeah. Or put right. a video camera as you walk out in the morning right. and start to talk to you as you're walking to your car. Right. And uh, allegedly some groups do. So yeah. even in in that, it's very courageous because... Yeah. A lot of the cults we've had on the show for the first season, I will say the leaders are, are, some of them, a lot of them are dead today, so that helps us. Or the cult has been dismantled. Fuck. Or it's like Jehovah's Witness where... It's a whole religion mm. you're pointing to, and what what do the um, what do the Jehovah Witness believe? It's um, a great question. They don't believe in education <laughs> or birthdays. No birthdays. They don't believe in birthdays. They don't believe in accepting gifts. No. They don't believe in Christmas. No, they don't believe in holidays. They've taken a part of the Bible and just interpreted it to their own liking. Um, but you should check out jw.org. One day it is J-Dum. fascinating J-Dum. and terribly written. Um, <laughs> really? Okay, so we are. give the number up. Uh, 818-533-1843. If, if, if there is someone who realized they were in a cult mm-hmm. and not realized it, because I think I think it's 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 the and it's called grooming. I don't know what it was, I don't know what it was called before. Mm-hmm. People started to groom people, right? Yeah, yeah. What was it called before? Like just going along. Like, what would grooming be? What would grooming be if you would say that you know you were a detective and you and if you said the guy walked into a place like almost like a pimp and then they had girls. Like, what would the what would that be called if you had people do things for you and then you got them to believe that almost like Manson, like they They're were doing grooming. something for the good of. Yeah. Yeah. Call it grooming. grooming. There was it was called grooming back then, yeah. even. Yeah. Yeah. Where you find somebody like in the Charles Manson um, situation where like Leslie Van Houten is comes from a good family in La Cañada, ends up at Spawn Ranch, and Charles Manson says to her, your father doesn't understand you, does he? Mm. And she was like, this is the first time that I ever Insane. had someone just Gets really it. see through me and understand mm-hmm. me. Especially and, a man. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Especially yeah, they a man. pry on all of that. Do you think yeah. that uh, we're almost are we almost done? I, it's we, fascinating. Too, yeah, right? I know it's. We can go do you, do, you, do you think that a group of people who are married but also treat their spouse in one way can be cultish, in a sense? Definitely. Okay. Do you know what I'm? You know what I'm saying? Do you, know, you know what that means? I never looked yeah. at it like that. Well, but I could see where it would. There's ties between abusive relationships and cults. Yes, but but if wives were of the same mind where they started to control their husbands and not allow mm. them to do certain things, which is not, it's a, it's a cult, it's, it's, a, it, it's you're changing someone else's behavior. Yeah, no, that's definitely cultic okay. behavior, yeah. 100%. What about those dudes that have to pretend, we're talking about that, 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 that They've kidnapped. They've been kidnapped in order to go to a bachelor party in Las Vegas. Like right. Year, for you year, might be in a one-on-one call, dude. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you know what I mean? Where, where they're like, dude, I, my wife's not gonna let me. Fuck, dude, if I'm getting married, it's like, hey, you motherfuckers, I'm gonna go to McDonald's. Yes. Yeah, put a bag over my head. Take me to Vegas. We'll come back. Beat the shit out of me, and I'll say that they took me. But, <laughs> yes. But but it, it becomes like that, doesn't yeah. it? And the point of the show too is like you get to see that the behavior isn't that you know it's not just like those crazy robe wearing cult people like it could yeah. be in your own home mm-hmm. it could be with your own wife or husband and when if you're in, if you're in a relationship and you're not sure in your heart of hearts that it is the relationship to continue mm. that person will say to you listen if you don't want to be here all you have to do is say i don't want to be here but Nobody ever says, I don't want to be here. Right. Because they're afraid. Right. And that's part of it, right? Well, yeah. I think a lot of the a lot of it is people ask questions like, if you don't understand how this stuff works, they say, well, why don't you just leave? And that's... Right. You can't just now, leave. See, now you brought up another question. Why don't they want to leave? Are, are they afraid of the unknown? Afraid of just leaving their security? 
why won't they just okay as a detective when you knew somebody had fucking done something yeah and you asked them did you do it and they said no what did you think like if you said hey you know like they said the police never ask a question unless they know the answer to it they're not guessing so you would know and you would say to somebody are you responsible for this and they would say no but you knew they did why would they say no because it's an irrational act that they're trying to get away from, and it follows with rack, acts of rationality in order to get away from it. So you murder somebody, that's an irrational act. Now you're acting rationally by trying to separate yourself from that. Mm. So that's why we expect them to say that. So the lie is... It's an act of rationality. You, you don't want to be honest with... Yeah. Well, I think also, too, like why, why don't you ask, why don't you just leave? Or why do you? Yeah, why yeah, do you yeah. I, you I just, leave? you know, if I'm if I'm that unhappy, and I sit there and say I want to leave, this but I'm that. afraid to say I want to leave. Am I afraid because I'm afraid of leaving comfort? You know, at least I have a house. I have. Well, there's usually it depends on the couple or the situation, obviously, but usually there's some. Um, you've been brainwashed to a degree, and your self-esteem has been ripped from under you from this person who you're in this situation with. So okay, two th- two it's things. like they say the definition of a cultic relationship is you're seeking love from the same person that's abusing you. Ah. Right? So you're constantly trying to win this person's approval. Gotcha. And also at the same time you say, okay, finally I feel strong today. I'm going to leave. And then that person says, yeah, you can leave, but you'll probably get cancer. Yeah. Or you can leave, but, you know, I know you and you, you're going to, you can't really do it on your own. Wow. Or they'll say some super. Yeah. 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 I. Yeah. And does it go back? And, and I'm going to say that it goes back to, for a man, being being treated the way that your mother treated you <laughs> and not giving you a fucking spine where you could disagree with somebody. I'm not going to say. I'm going to say when I was married. Everything had to be right or wrong. We couldn't disagree. Mm. And I would say to Anne, who I love, mine's mom, why don't we just agree to disagree and not have somebody have to be right or wrong? Right. And that we could never be in disagreement. Somebody had to be right right and somebody had to be wrong. So when you're not going into her saying, no, you're right, I am that way. I repelled, and then you you get out. Instead of saying, when you see some husbands that do do go way over and are being manipulated, Will, Will, Will Smith slapping Chris Rock, I think is a manipulation. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you end up at the point where you're really at the fucking ed, end of your rope. You've walked the plank, and the only place to go is down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, and all the manipulation that you've dealt with leading up to that point. It's just. It's like t- getting untangled from. Sounds good to me. <laughs> and, there, and, there, and there is no benefit for going along. Right. You're just going along. Well, you're, you, you're going along to appease. You just, you've sort of lost yourself. And yes. You don't really get a say anymore. Your so, opinion isn't. So uh, Jaden Jaden Smith and Willow Smith are uh, Will Smith's children. Uh, Willow Smith wrote a letter to Tupac saying that I wish you were here because if you were here, you would make us happy. Oh, I saw I saw the headline that she had written that letter. I did not know that's what it contained. <laughs> uh, pull the letter up and let's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We may not air it, but I want I you to. I, I, I want to get your opinion of what you, you've never you've never heard anything like it. I mean. From someone maybe who was a stepfather, a father they're fighting. He's was Tupac, better to me. Was Tupac and Jade? Jade? Uh, 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 no, no, uh, Jade. I think maybe they were maybe dating back in the day. Huh. But she wrote a letter to somebody who hasn't been around in twenty-five, almost thirty years. And somebody who she obviously and never. And how much she never? She doesn't know. She never got right. over him. You got it. I mean, this is it's chilling. Yeah, finding a cup. Is it? This look like it, dear Tupac. That was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dear Tupac. I know you're alive someplace. Uh, I think that my mommy really misses you. Can you please come back? Can you come back so mommy and me can be happy? I wish you were here. I really do. Wow. And, and I think it's a sad face. It looks like a scribble, but love Willow. Wow. Ooh. That it's came kinda, out 
It's got to hurt. I, I ju- yeah, I just saw this started to go around. That's that got to hurt. Articles just from because I'm out golfing week. during the day doesn't mean I don't know what's going on in the world. That is maybe one of the most devastating yeah. things that could ever be written. Well, we'll, we'll say now. Will he slap himself? <laughs> what do you What do you make? I mean, that's something, in your something life, to chew on. <laughs> in your life, in your life, you would never think that someone would write that to and then publish it and publish it. We're sure that she wrote that. Uh, I mean, that's just what I found on this yeah. quick Google, but I had seen that article and right. that headline sort of going around for the past couple of days, so it, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, there's something not right going uh, on in and that. And there's something going on a little yep. bit that's uh, of what we have spoken of. Yeah. There's yeah. some major You guys can do an episode stuff. on that. There's next. a lot there of go. stuff there Yeah, for sure. All right, well, good, thank you. I mean, this was awesome. Yeah, yeah no, great. thank you. You want to uh, tell awesome. the people again where to find, where oh, to follow, sure, any of that sure, good stuff? Sure, sure, uh, You guys can find the podcast anywhere you get your podcast uh, at Was I in, It's called Was I in a Cult? I'm going to start to... I'm, I'm going to be flying. I'll be... Not in town, but I'm going to start to, I'm going to download those and check them out. Fantastic. Because it's, it's amazing. Yeah. It sounds amazing. Can't wait. Let me know what you think. Uh, and, and you can follow us at Was I in a Cult on Instagram. And I'm at the Iacuzzi. Okay. Like Jacuzzi with an eye. Have you spoken <laughs> to the Nexium, any of the people from the HBO thing? or um, Not from the Val. No. But Jessica, no. The one when I, the woman I was did speak to was asked to be on Seduced. She turned it down though. Yeah. Did you watch Seduced? Yes. You did. Seduced is like on, on stars. stars. Listen, man. It's, that's only four episodes. And that one gets into all of the hey, key Matt, stuff. They branded, the, the dude was branding women. Boom, shit. On? On their pelvic region. That's crazy. Like Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> he has an ATC on his hip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fascinating. None of the afternoon. girls I spoke to were branded. They, well, they got out before well, that. Will you put your information? Yeah, hey, of course. Yeah. Branded with like a cow in the fire on the flesh, and they hold the person down. That is Alleged. Nuts. You know, I, was, I almost got a tattoo. What about the covent? Like people that were just, in covents. Oh yeah. So when I bought my house in Los, in, uh, so when I bought my house in Los Angeles. There was an elderly woman who lived alone next door to me, who was in her early 90s. And then she passed away, and the house was sold immediately. And it was... I put both of them on there. It was... Oh, thank you. Understood that she was part of a covent of women who had never been married and who lived in that house, which was owned by whatever uh, religious... Uh, sect that they believed in. Right. That's called. And she was the last. <laughs> and she was the last one. Is who, she out? Does she out. want to be she on the show? Away. She passed oh, away. She's in. Thank oh, damn. Well, thanks for coming out. This Thank awesome. you, guys. This was amazing. Great and you, to and meet you didn't have to pee the whole hour. Plus. I know. Can you believe <laughs> it? That's awesome. Gil did. That's why he got up. This is a huge fucking kid. <laughs> how big this is? Look at how big it is. Ten. I don't know. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs>